College Football Championship Week Gambling Picks brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books down there. Go check them all out. Hollywood Casino, Sam's Town, First Jackpot, Fitz Casino, uh, Horseshoe, and Gold Strike. I was about to say Horse Strike. <laughs> that would not have been correct. Not you correct. can find more information, including all the correct names, over at tunicatravel.com. So go check that thing out. Also, go over to winningcureseverything.com. We've got our football picks contest up there. We're going to keep this thing rolling through the NFL season, through bowl season, through everything else. So go put your picks in. Pick 10 games against the spread. You can win some pretty awesome prizes from Tunica, Mississippi. Last week, Bruce C. from Decatur, Alabama, went 7-3. and three. He won the tiebreaker. He won a $100 gift certificate to Twain's Steakhouse and a $50 slot play to Samstown. That's what I'm talking about. Now, as always, we've had some people talking yak in the comments. You can come on the show with us. We're going to let you on. We're going to let you tell the whole world what your picks will be. But in order to do that, you got to go 7-0. and We're only going to give you five picks each this week. Sure, you week. Gotta, it's championship week. Yeah, it's championship yeah. week. There's only 15 games, but you have to go 7-0. and Give us your seven games. Give us the lines. Give us what team, what number, where you got the lines from. You got to give me all that information. No coming in here with some fake lines. Don't be giving me that bull crap. Bunch of smack talkers then going to just toss out like, well, I'm taking Alabama, whatever the line is. You can't do that. I'm going to make up my own line. Alabama wins by 30. Up. Oh, line was 31. Like, I'll make up whatever. So here's the deal. Seven picks. Give me the spread. Give me where you got the spread. You go 7-0, oh, you coming on the show with us. Sound good? I'm good with that. I'm down with it. We do an NFL gambling pick show that is the same setup as this one. We pick five games each week against the spread. Go visit that one. Football ain't over yet. We still going to come back with some uh, bowl picks and, and playoff picks, and we're going to talk whatever. We're doing really good in the NFL. Chris. Is picking at a 62% clip right now. Come on now. 35 and 22, is that right? Yeah. yeah and it's pretty, pretty good. good. Pretty good. So, go check out the NFL Gambling Picks page, or uh, uh, post, or four, video, four one whatever. last week, you know. Yeah, 4 and 1 just last a, week. Just a regular old week. <laughs> <laughs> now, last week, I went 4 and 3 in college football picks. That's right. You went 3 and 4. That's right. I'm 46, 42 and 3 on the year. You were 45, 44 and 2. I'm, I'm I'm barely above five hundred. I'm just you, just a breathing water. You got to go three and two this week. Yeah, just to stay above five hundred. I know. You think you got it? I think I got it. All right, let's jump into this thing then. I'm going to give you my game first. All right, Northwestern plus fourteen and a half against Ohio State. Look, Northwestern is eleven two and one against the spread since 2014 as an underdog. In 2018. Ohio State is 1-7 and seven against the spread as a 10-plus point favorite uh, since week number three. I like them odds. I think Northwestern's going to be more fired up for this game than Ohio State will be. I understand it is for the Big Ten Championship. I got that. But I feel like Ohio State blew everything they had on Michigan last week. That's right. And they're not going to be as jacked up for this one. Northwestern has been ready to play this game for three weeks. Now, they've still been winning games. But they've been jacked up for this one. This is their first time to the Big Ten Championship game. They are ready to roll. I love Northwestern here as an underdog. Catching 14 and Catching a half Catching 14 points. and a half. I love the hook here. Whew. I, I think Northwestern got a chance to win the game. My first pick, Northwestern minus 14 and a half. Or plus 14 and a half. I was about to say, good no. Lord, where'd you get that line from? Listen, <laughs> listen Ohio State needs to blow out Northwestern. They they really need to do that. Yeah. But what they need to do and what they can or will do are two different things. Okay. Pat Fitzgerald is going to have his guys ready for this game. I, I, I like Northwestern to be a live dog to win this thing. Ohio State, other than against Michigan, which is just pure hatred and, and just fury and wrath and rage and, and, and desperation, they have not looked good at all. I I don't understand. Not to mention the fact that uh, 
Urban owns a little bit of space in uh, in Harbaugh's head, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, like I said, I don't think he a, owns space in in Fitzgerald's head. No, no. Northwestern has everything to win and nothing to lose in this game. They have known they were going to play in this game for three weeks. I believe that this will be a pro Northwestern crowd. Their fans have been buying up hotel rooms for the last three weeks, getting every ticket they can get for the last three weeks. Ohio State found out two days ago they were going to play in this game. Yeah, that's it. They they couldn't look ahead. They couldn't buy tickets early. What happens if Michigan wins? Now they got to go either sell these tickets to Michigan fans. They don't want to do that, or go down there and watch it. They don't want to do that. So so I, I I just think this is a is going to be very much set up for Northwestern to play well here. I definitely think they're a live dog to win. I agree. Game number two for me. Memphis plus three and a half at UCF. This game was already played once this year. UCF won 31-30 to in the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. But that game had massive Memphis turnovers. It was played in the rain. Uh, UCF squeaked by. Squeaked by. Memphis probably should have won the game. They were up 30-14 to at one point. Uh, just a whole lot of things had to go wrong for UCF to win. Right? This go round, there's no McKenzie Milk. That that's a big big deal, right? Well, yeah, so, that guy's a great college football player. Yes, I mean a great uh, college and, football and, player. And Daryl Mack may be great, but I think this might be a little early and too big of a spot for him, even at home. UCF number one hundred nine in the country against the run. Memphis is the number five rushing team in the country. They are number three in yards per carry this year. I'm telling you, Memphis is better in the trenches on both sides of the line than UCF is this season. They are going to be ready for this. And Memphis players and coaches and fans hate UCF. They they feel like they should have been UCF, right? Like, how did UCF go from 0-12 to this? And we have been building and building and building this program. They feel like this is theirs. They want this AAC championship. UCF... I, I think, obviously, it's a championship game. They're going to be feeling the same way. They feel like they should be winning this. Uh, with UCF, it, it, win or lose, it doesn't matter. I think they're still going to a New Year's Six game. With Memphis, whole different deal. They have not won an outright conference championship since the 70s. I was about to say, it's been a long time. This is a big, big deal. I got them at plus three and a half. I feel really good about it. I think they are probably going to win the game here, but I do feel better with that three and a hook. My next game, I'm going to the Cal. Stanford game. This this is always a big game. This is always a fun game. And this year, I think, is Cal's year to win this thing outright. I got Cal plus two and a half. I think they're going to be ready to play in this game. Um, they, have, they have looked good uh, all season. They, they've played really well in the, in the Pac-12. Um, they've hung with some teams that I thought they shouldn't have hung with. They beat some teams that I thought they, they probably should, should have lost to. And uh, in Stanford's been down this year that they're not the juggernaut that Stanford's been in a while and and so I don't I don't know that any of the previous season's numbers come into effect here because this isn't your normal typical Stanford team and uh Cal's at home I'm, I'm taking Cal game number three for me Stanford minus two and a half at Cal we're going opposite sides on this one so you All gotta right. pick whichever one you think is better Stanford five and one against the spread against Cal the last six years Stanford is 2-0-1 against the spread as a road favorite this season. The metrics have got Stanford minus 6. Look, that Stanford offense is clicking right now. They put up 49 on UCLA last week. I understand Cal and UCLA, two different teams, but Stanford's offense has been rolling. They understand how to beat teams like Cal. They are a team like Cal, only this year they've got their offense rolling. Um, yeah, Stanford's been a little down for Stanford, but... This is still a pretty good football team. Uh, both teams are going bowling. Like, I, I like Stanford here. Two and a half seems short to me, especially with the metrics saying it should be about a touchdown. Um, yeah, I'm all over Stanford minus two and a half. What, uh, what's your game number three? Game number three, I'm taking the Pitt Panthers, and I'm taking all 26 and a half of those points. I'm, I'm, that, look, that's, that's a lot of points. A, it's a lot of points. I know that Clemson – 
doesn't cover these lines very often. They they have been what are they, big, one big and favorites. Seven? Yeah, they're, they're, uh, when it's twenty one. Yeah, one and seven 21. when they're when it's over twenty one point favorite. And and look, I don't know that. I'm not saying that Pitt is a live dog. I'm not saying Pitt has a chance to win the game, but Pitt can run the football, and if they can run the football a little bit, they can keep the ball away from Clemson just long enough to keep this game lower scoring and 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 a little bit closer to the vest than 26 and a half. That's just a lot of points. It's a championship game. Pitt's going to play with some pride and and they're going to they're going to try to believe they can win and be the ACC champions. Um I, I don't think they really can. I definitely think they can keep it within 26 and a half. I like that. That was good. That's a, that I was conviction. That. Thank you. Uh, game number four for me. Texas plus seven and a half against Oklahoma. Look, Texas seven one and one against the spread as an underdog the last two seasons under Tom Herman. Texas is six and zero against the spread against Oklahoma the last six years, and they got three outright wins, including earlier this season. Remember, Texas was up forty five to twenty four, and took their foot off the gas and started playing prevent defense and all that kind of crap and let Oklahoma come all the way back on them before they had to kick a game-winning field goal. Look, everybody always says that you go with the revenge team, right? You go with the team that lost the first matchup when it's a rematch situation. Just in the Big 12 last year, Oklahoma beat TCU 38-20 to in Norman in the regular season. That was in November. Then again in December, they played in Jerry World, Oklahoma beat them even worse, 41-17. to Sometimes it is just a, a nightmare stylistic matchup, and Texas is that for Oklahoma. They play Oklahoma better than anybody. I don't think Oklahoma's going to run over this team. I think 7.5 is crazy. I'm not saying Texas wins the game. I think they got a chance to, but I think this is a close football game because I think Tom Herman and that bunch will be amped up, and I think the lights might be a little too bright for Kyler Murray and that bunch. Uh, they we know they can't stop anybody. No, they can't do that. So can Texas stop them? I think they I think they can a few times. Uh, and if that's the case, I mean a, a touchdown either way wins this for me. Uh, I like Texas plus seven in the hook. Okay, cool. <laughs> hook them. <laughs> <laughs> my next pick. This this might be my last chance to to ride with my guy. He's let me down a lot. He's cost me a lot of money. He's not going to cost me money this week. I'm going with Justin Fuente one more time. Playing against Marshall, Virginia Tech, at home, minus four and a half. They got some confidence they, points they, last week, they didn't ju- they? They just have to win by a touchdown, and they got to win this game to get to a bowl game. This game matters more to them than it does to Marshall. You cannot lose two games to non-Power 5 teams And one home. of them at home. Yeah, so you can't. you, you just can't do that. So, I, I, Vitek, Justin Fuente, have the guys ready to play. They got things rolling last week. Got a little bit of the juju back and, and a little, little swagger, feeling good about themselves. Let's beat up on Marshall. Let's get to a bowl game, and, and let's let's try to salvage a season and make a little bit of money for me, Justin. You know. You owe me that money. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, that, that young team could use the bowl practice. They really they could, could. absolutely they, they need those practice. extra ten practices right yeah yeah big time big time is it ten or is it fifteen whatever what I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I just made that number up so you you would actually know the I real think, answer I think it's fifteen I think it's fifteen I, I just practice. made up a number uh, game number five for me and then you got one more right I got one more after all that. right game number five for me East Carolina at NC State NC State minus twenty four here the last three seasons zero oh and eight against the spread on the road against teams with a winning record for East Carolina. You take out the UConn game, which everybody destroys UConn. That's right. East Carolina is 1-6, and six, with the one win being UConn. Uh, in their last seven games, they have been outscored by an average of 28 points per game in their last six losses. <coughs> I mean, I'm talking East Carolina is some kind of bad, and I think they've just about given up on this season. In their last game last week against Cincinnati, they lost 56-6. to six. NC State, they got more all-ACC guys than Clemson does this year. They got talent. They got everything out. The offense is going to be rolling. East Carolina can't stop anybody. Uh, I love NC State here. 
Uh, they they got to win this to get the nine wins. I, I think they do it. I think uh, I think NC State minus twenty four is the way to go. What's your last game? My last game. I'm picking the Friday game. I, I'm going to watch every second of this game. I I love both these coaches. Chris Peterson, top five coach in college football to me. I love Kyle Whittingham. I I, I really like what Utah has done all season. I shouldn't say that. Middle of the season, once they started rolling. What was that, like week four? Week four, week five, week five when they just they just kind of took off. And and they're still rolling, even no, without the starting quarter, even without say, Tyler they, Hundley. They're not slowing down. It's tough to pick against them. I have gone back and forth on who I'm taking. I knew I was going to bet one of these teams. I knew I'm betting this game because it's the Friday night game. I'm going with the better coach. I'm going with the more experienced coach. I'm going with Chris Peterson. He knows how to win big games. He knows how to play in championship games. I, I'm I'm rolling with him minus six. My gut was to take the six points because I think these games are a little even. I'm, and I am the guy that likes the revenge factor. I, I got to go with Chris Peterson and the and the guy that I think is the better coach in the football team who knows how to get his players ready for a big game. I could so I could I'm see riding that. with Washington. I don't think either either side of that is a bad pick. No, it's this is one of those where normally I'm I stay away. There's not a lot of games. There's one big game on Friday night. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to have something riding on it. This game has to matter to me. The only way to make it matter is to put a little cheese on it, put a little pride on it. And so I like it. I'm riding with I'm riding with Peterson. I can I can see that. I mean, Washington did beat them twenty one to seven at Utah early in the season, and they looked really yeah. good. And it was before they yeah. now they they looked real good whooping up on Washington State. Yeah. Now that was um, in the snow, and I'm I'm not going to get into that game. But but, it, but yeah. Washington is a is a really physical team. That's right. Utah has been beating up on not very physical teams, softer teams, softer yeah. opponents. I could I could see it. All right, let's do a let's do a recap. We'll Northwestern recap. plus fourteen and a half. Memphis plus three and a half, Texas plus seven and a half, Stanford minus two and a half, NC State minus twenty four. What's your five? I got Cal plus two and a half. We got Northwestern plus fourteen and a half. I got Pitt plus twenty six and a half. I got Vitek minus four and a half. I got Washington minus six. A whole lot of halves in this, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of hooks, man. No pushes. I like it. I, I'm not as scared of a half point. No, nah, me either. Because I don't like pushes. I don't like pushes either. I want to win. Give me the win. I'm not scared to lose. Give me the win. All right, that's going to wrap up the college football uh, gambling picks for championship week, week 14, whatever you want to call it. The regular season is Um, over. Championship week is over. Exactly. We have given you all the information you need to go down and be a winner. So go put some action down on your favorite plays in Tunica, Mississippi. they got six incredible sports books. Go to tunicatravel.com to figure out which one you want to go to. Uh, We will recommend all of them. Any one of them is great. Go put some money down on it. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Fill out your bracket. Not your bracket. Fill out your pick sheet. We, we ain't to the NCAA tournament yet. That's right. Fill out your pick sheet. Ten picks against the spread. Ten games. You can win some awesome prizes. Winningcureseverything.com. Football picks contest is up in the top right corner. Uh, hit that subscribe button for us on YouTube. And leave us your seven picks. If you want to come in on the show and tell us what we're doing wrong, you go 7-0 this week, we're going to let you in for bowl season, baby. Let's do this thing. That'll wrap it up. Anything else? No. Thanks, guys. I think we're good. We appreciate y'all.